Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and one of the most important add-ons for Blender just hit a 1.0 release. Kind of a big deal. So what we're going to do is jump in and take a look at it. Now that add-on is called Terrain 3D for Godot. Uh, this is available for Godot 4 under GD Extensions support. Uh, it is written in C++. It is optimized. It can be assessed using GD Scripts, C Sharp, or any other language that Godot supports. There are a ton of other features with this guy, but the big thing here is they just released the 1.0 release. So they went from the 0.9.3 beta up to the 1.0 release. I'm not going to get too much into what they added in this particular release. Instead, what I'm going to do is to go ahead and show you exactly how Terrain 3D works. Now, the good news is, if you have no clue what you're doing here, it is also well documented. I always appreciate projects, especially open source projects, with good documentation. So this one does have good solid documentation. By the way, the creator of this one, Tokusan Games, they also have another extension called Sky 3D. So if you need to create an outdoor world in your Godot environment, well, this is providing terrain and skies for you. Now, definitely one of those areas where Godot is lacking. Uh, so let's go ahead and show you how this guy works. The first thing we need to do is put it somewhere. Of course, that means temp and train to to. All right, so there we go. We'll go ahead and create it there. This is not get. Go ahead, create. And here is our new project. Now, uh, the nice thing about this one is it is available in the asset store. So getting started with this one is as simple as going to the asset library. Come on up here and search for terrain. Uh, that's it. You will find there are two options here, Terrain 3D and Terrain 3D GD 4.3. I do believe this is just basically uh, Godot 4.3 versus Godot 4.4 functionality. So this one here is for Godot 4.4. Uh, that is what I'm using today, and that is what I'm going to demonstrate. So basically, just go ahead and click download. It will download it from the asset library and let it do its thing. Bump, 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 bump. There we go. So now you've got the option. You can change the install directory. Uh, you can also set it to not install the demos, but the demos are what we're going to showcase today. So we'll just go ahead and install those assets. It goes ahead. It does its import. Everything is pretty much ready to go. There is one last step, though, before you can continue. That is go into project, project settings, go to your plugins, and turn Terrain 3D on. You will notice immediately after doing that, uh, a little Terrain 3D window popped up down here. That is where our controls come in. And then on top of that, when we are working on a train, uh, we will have tools that show up. And let me just show you exactly that process right now. So we got here a uh, demo. This is a demonstration level uh, used and basically showcases the tooling that's involved. So you see all of this world is being created with it. Now, the nice thing is there's some performance features in place, including a new one in this current release, where it kind of just loads in the collision maps as you're walking over it. So you can have these really complex trains, but they don't kill your performance as you are going. So here we got our train uh, in the world, for example. You notice once I selected it, we had this little toolbar pop up down here. Now, this is where your train authoring tools are in place. Now, you're going to notice there's all, multiple different options for... Um, how to set things so you got textures and uh, assets that can be scattered through the world and so on and you're going to notice as i am jumping through this like so different areas light up so you have these different regions that, that kind of all work together we can edit across them but if i come back here and click the the add button over here i believe it will actually nuke the area you're in so here you can see this whole region is now completely flat same thing right there so you can easily get rid of them and then once you've got them in place come on in here we've got our painting tool and we're just going to go ahead and raise it. Now you notice it's not doing that much. Well, that's because size and strength. Let's increase the strength, increase the amount that we're raising. And there you can see, very easy to author things like this. So basically you're increasing the space right there. Hold down control, it goes in the opposite direction. So if you want to shrink it into the world. Now the cool thing here is, notice as I just crossed regions, it automatically handles the various different regions as you span between them, uh, which is very cool. On top of that, we have other tools here like smoothing, uh, a height tool right there, so if you want to. And then you're noticing here, as we get the edges, it's automatically pulling in the textures for the different heights and altitudes. So we got here, like this big mountain there. Uh, so let me just raise this a whole lot. So once we get up a certain amount, you'll get it switches into stone based off the height level that you are working on. Very cool in that regard. And then we've got other things here for like painting the textures and overlays. So the textures available down here. So you see, I could just go ahead and paint. So we've got just two textures to work with in this demo. But if I wanna go ahead and paint some stone in, 
I can paint it this way. Again, control over our texture brush, our angle, and so on. We've got a dynamic option available over here. We can change the scale out. And then, of course, we can come in here and paint grass as well. So painting your textures into the world, super easy, as you will see. Now, the other cool thing here is you can actually cut holes. So we got a cut hole into the space here. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, let's go ahead and showcase. So this one actually has it, but I don't know where it is. I'm not going to hunt it down. So instead, I'm going to switch over to the navigation demo. And then what you're going to see here is you have this nav mesh that the AI can use. And I'll show you how to paint these in just a second. But nav meshes can be used for doing, uh, again, AI pathfinding. Those are the areas where the AI will stick to. Those are basically your walkable areas. And then what you're going to notice over here on the topic of holes, we've got here, we've got a cut in, and we've actually got a um, cave system here. So you can actually cut caves into the world if you wish as well. The cave system is actually really straightforward. If I go ahead and just hide the train, you see it's pretty much just a mesh into the world. Now, what you're going to notice here is our nav mesh doesn't actually go into the cave, which is interesting because let's go ahead and show you this demo in action. So here, actually, let me just go ahead uh, and bed, make float. Okay, I don't want it to float. Let's go ahead. We'll run that again like so, and then just make that maximum. Okay, so here we go. So here is our demo, and you'll notice we have our little shadow that's walking around uh, like this. Now, I want to, okay, here we go. So I'm going to speed this up. So we're following that nav mesh. And then what you're going to notice is if, if I get away enough, our little stalker is coming at us at maximum speed. So there you can see. So you've got uh, AI nav meshes tools to work around your actual uh, world. So let's just go quickly look over here. Again, our stalker, you can see the path that it is using to come through. All of this is optimized in high performance. Again, it's written in a GD extension using primarily C++ for most of the coding. A uh, number of optimization tricks in place so you can actually use these in your world. But if we get up here far enough, you are going to find um, the cave system here. So let's just go check that cave out. We'll go on through. And the other thing you're going to notice is we're being confined by gravity. Uh, so there are collisions being generated automatically. I can turn those off as well. So here we go. So we got this guy. He's going to come after us again. Nav mesh. He's doing his thing. Here he comes. Here he comes. And here he comes. So you get, you've got the AI navigation stuff all uh, works with this as well. And he's going to just about get to us. But once again, you're going to see there is no, uh, no nav mesh going through this area. So he does not know what to do. So let's head on back over here. And then what you're going to see is, oh, I'm detectable again. And he's going to run around the world accordingly. So boom, like so. And then another thing I can do is, for example, turn off uh, gravity. And I'll, so there, now there's no gravity. I can fly up into the world. Like so, I can turn gravity back on. And then the other thing I do is turn off collisions, and you'll see we'll just fall through the world. So it provides a lot of functionality for you. Again, the nav mesh. So how do we go about setting it? So these are the only areas where that guy can navigate. Well, what if I wanted to go and make that a path? right there. Well, to do this, it's actually pretty straightforward. So we go ahead, we select our train like this. And you're notice we down here, we have this option called paint navigable area, and then it gets all purpley. And then what we do is basically just add purple path. So now you can actually go through that particular area we just added. So how do you bake this? At first glance, you would think you come into navigable area and you click bake navigation mesh, but no, you do not. What you do is you come back here to train 3D, uh, click that drop down right there and bake the nav mesh. Now, this can take a little bit of time. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how long. Uh, it is not an immediate process by any means, but basically, there you can see now it has the nav mesh in, and our AI will now go that way as well. So, creating these nav meshes to navigate around your train, super easy as well. And then on top of that, we've also got tools here for like um, pasting. Um, uh, 3D objects or meshes throughout the world. So if you had trees or whatever you wanted to paint them, you have paint tools for doing that there as well. And then we also have the option we can paint holes. We can also add wetness to areas. So let's say that this was a watery area. You're going to see it becomes a little bit more. So there you can see that adds the glossiness. So if you've got an area that abuts water, you've got the ability to paint wetness areas and you can just paint out straight out paint a color if you wished as well. So like that. So all the tools you need to create uh, your game. And the cool thing is, even if you are working in the land of code only, uh, or you want to bring in your uh, height map from a, a, you know an, an external tool you developed, I'll support it as well. So let's go ahead. We'll run this scene. And this one is being generated entirely by code. So this entire project, 
by code. Here we have our stalker again, navigating around the world like so. But this entire train, everything you are seeing here, code generated. So we come back here, we take a look at this script right here, and what you'll see is the code for creating the train. And it's pretty simple. Uh, basically, you're creating like the asset, uh, you're creating the the train um, textures and such to set it up. And all the details are available here. So if you want to create your code, to create your uh, train environment entirely using procedural code, you can do that as well. So ladies and gentlemen, that is it. That is uh, Train 3D. Again, one of the most important plugins for Godot because I think this is the most mature and highly optimized um, train engine out there for Godot. Uh, and again, they just reached that um, 1.0 release, which is important. So again, written entirely, oh, not entirely, actually, I guess I could say it's written 63.5% in C++ using GD extensions. Again, you can access it using any Godot supported programming language and a ton of features and functionality in there. Again, you can also import in your height maps from tools such as Gaia, World Creator, World Machine, Unity, Unreal, etc. Anything that can export a, a height map, you can get it in here. And again, one of the other cool things about this project is it is well documented and I always appreciate that. If you appreciate it as well, come on over here, give them a like. Uh, they always seem to appreciate that. And yeah, Train 3D for Godot, probably the most mature train system out there has just reached 1.0 status. Let me know what you think, comments down below. I will talk to you all later, goodbye.